This program is a Warren Stiebel production in association with South Carolina ETV. Funding for Firing Line is made possible by a major grant from the John M. Olin Foundation, Incorporated. Additional support is provided by the Annenberg Foundation and the Friends of Firing Line. <laughs> We're here to discuss the question of whether the government has or should have the authority to regulate the Internet. Uh, Congress passed in January the Communications Decency Act, which uh, forbade programming that was, quote, indecent or, quote, obscene. The American Civil Liberties Union and others pleaded with a district court judge to prohibit enforcement of the law on the grounds of unconstitutionality. The ACLU pleaded for identical privileges for Internet as are enjoyed by Times Square. But, of course, the judge observed that there were already laws against obscenity over the air. He agreed to suspend implementation until argument was had over the word indecency. We have a number of spirited and uh, learned guests with whom we'll exchange our views. One is Ira Glasser, who is the executive director of ACLU, well known to viewers of Firing Line, who, however, may not remember that Mr. Glasser majored in college in mathematics, in which field he is greatly missed. <laughs> but Michael Kinsley is an alumnus of Crossfire who is not running for president of the United States, former editor of the New Republic, a, a, a lawyer by training, and now uh, into, as, as they say, into cyberspace for Microsoft, uh, working on a magazine he's developing. Susan Estrick is professor of law at the University of Southern California, a law center whose hospitality we acknowledge uh, appreciatively. She was the campaign manager in 1994 for Michael Dukakis, uh, uh, 1988, for president, returned as professor of law uh, to Harvard before coming here. John Perry Barlow calls himself a retired cattle farmer, rancher rather, from uh, Wyoming. Uh, in fact, um, two years after graduating from college, he became lyricist for the Grateful Dead. He is a contributing editor of numerous publications and says of himself, He's probably the only former Republican County chairman in America willing to call himself a hippie mystic. <clears throat> Esther Dyson graduated from Harvard with a BA in economics, went to Forbes magazine as a reporter, and then into Cyberland in which she is greatly influential. She is the president of Adventure Holdings and is active in emerging computer markets of Central and Eastern Europe. On the other side, uh, Arianna Huffington is with us again, the prominent author, critic, and uh, biographer. Ms. Huffington is a graduate of Cambridge University, the author of the female, female women and the biographies of Maria Callas and Pablo C Picasso. Uh, Reed uh, Hoffman is a graduate of Stanford University who received an advanced degree from Oxford in philosophy. He has worked for Apple Computer uh, and other uh, formidable companies and works currently for Fujitsu in the Cultural Technologies Division, preparing who knows what for us via internet. <laughs> and uh, Kathleen uh, Cleaver uh, is a uh, graduate of the University of South Florida with a law degree from Georgetown. She's director of legal studies for the Family Research Council, a pro-family research and lobbying organization. Let's begin by asking a basic question. Mr. Glasser, are there any aspects of the internet that call for special legislative attention of any kind? I don't think so. I think that we ought to treat the internet just the way we treat newspapers and books. Applicable laws are fine. If, um, if I were to suggest anything, I would suggest a law that would mandate uh, the, uh, the production and availability of, uh, of software filters so that parents could block out uh, anything that they want to block out, which, uh, which is all freely available now, are fairly inexpensive, uh, and if, uh, if online services were required to provide them, that would be a good thing. But Do you need a law to uh, encourage no, the free market? Really. Mm -hmm. No, not really. Uh, now, um, you would disagree with that, uh, Ms. Huffington, why? I would disagree for two reasons. First of all, I don't understand why we should merely require rather than mandate. If we believe that something is important, then why not use the power of government to regulate and mandate so that it is more likely that it should happen. 
Secondly, we all know very well that children can outwit their parents, especially on the internet. Children know much better how to use the internet and to surf the web than their parents know. So why not say that this is really a new challenge that we are facing as a society, that the old accommodation is not working anymore in terms of the internet, and that we all need to get together in a partnership, which you liberals love normally, partnerships between government and the private sector. Here's an opportunity to have a real one. Well, you know, the, the Congress didn't even make an inquiry, Ariana, did not even make an inquiry, didn't hold a hearing, didn't establish a study commission to even find out what the state of the art of this filtering technology is. And yet the filtering technology exists. To say that it doesn't work is way premature. And to say that kids can out with their parents on the internet, they also can out with their parents on the street. I mean, you know, kids do not live in a bubble. My kids grew up in the middle of Manhattan, as you well know. Uh, they're all in their 20s and 30s now. They've survived reasonably intact. I think you would like them. I think you would like their <laughs> values. Um, and they walked around in Times Square when they were 12 and 14, and they weren't supposed to go to certain places, and they weren't supposed to talk to strangers, but uh, could they outwit me when they got to be 16 or 17 or 15? I suppose so. Mr. Barlow, you were going to comment on that. Yeah, I, actually, I wanted to go back, you know, Ira, my distinguished colleague claims that they should be the internet should be regulated uh, in the same way that magazines and newspapers are. In fact, this is not like a magazine or a newspaper or any kind of publication or any kind of broadcast medium. This is a conversation. We are talking about a conversation that includes just about everybody on the planet eventually. And I think that there is something audacious about government deciding that it can regulate a conversation. But do telephones. You can't do obscenities over the telephone. You well, that. you can you can you can regulate what obscenities over the phone within the continental limits of the United States. Well, yeah, but that, that, but let's confine the conversation to within. The well, United no, States. but we that that's but the problem. Can't. That's the problem. How? What? By what? Hurry up! He's going crazy. By what authority does the, wrong. By what? By what authority <laughs> does the government extend its jurisdiction to include the rest of the planet? And it's even, be, I mean, even within the continental United States, I mean, Ariana asks why the government shouldn't do this. It's a very simple, short, clear little answer, and it's called the First Amendment. And you, Mr. Buckley, know well that the First Amendment is intended to protect political speech, that much that you may find obscene and that I may find distasteful and that neither of us would want to show to our children would qualify no. indeed as somebody else's political speech. And the last place we need to look to answer this particular problem is the last place you want to look to answer every other problem, the government. Not, no, wait a minute. Let's just nail down one point. Uh, we have no obligation to um, feed internet into Mexico, do we? I mean, if, if, if we forbid X, Y, and Z, we're not imposing on Mexico, are we? This bespeaks a complete ignorance of how the thing works. We don't feed internet to anybody. They feed internet to us. A local prosecutor in Germany, as you're well aware, decided he wanted to regulate the internet. Just all he cared about was going to Hamburg, his his yeah. particular city, Munich. Munich. But the reality was the only way that CompuServe could address his concerns and obey the law that he was laying down was to apply that law to the whole world. So the the idea is, on the one hand, the internet puts puts everyone beyond the reach of government. That's what Mr. Barlow would like to think. But in a way, it does the opposite. It makes us all citizens of every country and every jurisdiction in the entire world. Well, why, why should it be our concern uh, if, in the course of attempting to eliminate something in America, it means the, fin the Finns can't have it? Because <laughs> in the course of attempting to eliminate something in Germany, it means we Americans can't have it. That's not true. Well, that, 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 <laughs> that, isn't it? This, this assumes that our cultural well, if they values. they don't like it in Tennessee, are, 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 I can't are, have it in LA. Yeah, are, are, are our cultural values somehow superior to every other cultural value? I'm, I'm not saying it's superior. I'm saying they're ours. Uh, we ought to be sovereign over what it is that we permit or well, don't permit in America. The, the, the fact that the, 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 if, if we if we cut down on pornographic films and and Italians have few American pornographic films, that's kind of too bad, isn't it? That's but not also, a big concern. You know, we're also, we're also requiring that the Italians not put pornographic films on the net, or the Lithuanians, or the uh, Uzbekistanis. This leads to one not on any, no. Not on any... Not on any... That's where it's going. No, it's not, on any <laughs> not on any facilities <laughs> over, not which on. We have, over which we have control. Uh, Ms. Dyson, you wanted to... Sorry. Yeah, fundamentally, the problem is not that pornography is or is not good. I think it's crummy. The issue is, should the government determine what people can say and do on the internet in order you know, to protect said, children we're trying to destroy the freedoms of adults oh, please you know the government already 
restricts First Amendment rights in the cases of slander, in the cases of uh, dangerous speech, as it is called, in the cases of perjury. Yes, in very so well-recognized specific yes, ways. Yes, but here we have a new technology that also needs to be regulated under the same standards and principles. And you know, Susan, but for, you to say immediately, for you to say immediately it's the First Amendment and therefore all conversation has to stop is really absurd. The no. First Amendment is restricted in many cases. No, therefore the government has to be careful. Therefore the government can't go in with a Mack truck plowing everything in sight. And what this statute did, and you acknowledge it, this statute passed by Congress, the best that at least our Congress could come up with, absolutely and without question violates constitutional rights. And everyone knows it. Well, there are its many definition of indecency and patently offensive won't hold up. And indeed, everybody's relying on its unconstitutionality to score political if points. I ask Ms. Cleaver a legal question. Yeah. Because she is, is it your understanding that this law how does this law apply that says that you can't make uh, this material, undesirable material, available to children? Now, the way the web works, the way the internet works is anyone can put anything on it, and if you know the address, you can get it. Does that mean that anything on the web is available to children, and therefore this law applies to everything on the web? Absolutely not. It applies similarly as uh, the dial and porn statutes apply. Uh, under the dial and porn law, you are not allowed to make available pornography to minors. So when a minor calls up your service, you can't give that minor access. The same would hold true. How do they know it's a minor? They're required to, the to nature, take reasonable steps, excuse nature, me, they're trying to take good faith steps to determine well, what, the age. What, what and even good, if what, a child what, gets through, it's not their fault if they've taken good faith steps. Well, what good That's faith step is it possible to take on the internet where you put the stuff on your computer and the other people come to you. It's not hard to set up a screen page to, to uh, have somebody uh, give a password, or uh, we're, we're increasingly card? able to scan, to scan a driver's license, etc. So you're not, you're, you would say, in your interpretation of this law, if I have an obscene or, or, or website, and, and I, have, I have, have a little dialogue box that pops up when you come up, say, by the way, are you over 18, and, I can ch and the, anyone can check yes, <laughs> I have met this law, and you're not going to you're not you're going to defend me if I'm prosecuted. Well, of course, that's not good faith, and people have tried that, and they've failed in other areas, just like adult bookstores. Well, how can I do She's it? Tell me, tell me, tell me what I can do in good faith to to, to you know, to, Michael. To, the, well, the, the law. Criminal, I, I'd the love criminal to. Criminal division of the Department of Justice wrote a long letter to the Senate uh, opposing this bill on the ground not only draft. that it was unconstitutional, uh, but that it would make it harder. It would cripple their their ability. Uh, to prosecute under the obscenity provisions because of all the elaborate defenses that were written into this because people don't want to uh, criminalize uh, a material that is not obscene, which this thing clearly does. That was a previous I mean, the, the prosecutors have gone into the, have the, the government have gone into court and given the opposite answer to the one that Ms. Cleaver just did. They and have Ira, said, you know what, this the, is clearly unconstitutional, but we won't what stipulate what to it. Ira, that's just that's not just true. The restrictions are about access providers, and you know that very yeah. well. But the I'm key telling thing you what here, the lawyer Ira, said in second. court, Ariana, were you there? You know, why are you wasting time on technicalities instead of debating the really important the, issue? Which, which is, is the principle is this, of free The real speech. question is, is this really worth attempting? There are many things that no. we have not... Susan, excuse me, let me finish. There are many things that we have not succeeded at uh, resolving AIDS, cancer. Should we say, I'm sorry, we can't do that, let's stop trying? It's the same thing with the Internet. What we're debating here is, is this worth attempting? Is it worth attempting to protect children? Is what we're Are we saying saying sending is someone to jail and saying, well, this is not just some abstract notion. I'm absolutely delighted to sit with you for hours and hours and talk about how all of us might think about how to protect our children. This is a criminal statute. It is an amendment to the criminal laws of the United yes, States that says people go to jail for two years and can be fined hundreds of thousands but of dollars. If only, that's only not if a little knew, technicality. Uh, Professor Asher, only if they knew what they were up to. Well, but only, listen, you and I both know that every prosecutor, this law is a, a gift to every prosecutor that's around the country, eager to make his or her name that's to silly. take this law. It is not silly when you and I both understand that it's politically popular. Would you buy my life? You just finished saying there was insurance? absolutely unprosecutable law, didn't you? Hmm? You just finished saying it was an unprosecutable law. No, no. no what, I said was, what I said was because the access the, providers is that the government. No, what I what I said was two things. One is is that 
even if you could enforce it in the United States, the very same things that you want to prevent could be posted in Finland or any place else and become just as accessible, and this law and no law that we pass could possibly reach it. I'd like to take second, the second thing is, up, is that, is that the, what I said was that the, the government lawyers went into court when we sued and told the judge in chambers in the presence of our lawyers that they believed that this was unconstitutional, and the judge said, will you stipulate to it and agree to a consent order uh, where I declared unconstitutional, they said no. The reason they said no is because of what Susan has said. This is a political stunt. They want to make hay with people who are afraid of child pornography, and they want the ACLU and the judges and the Supreme Court to declare down. Then they say, well, we tried. But they didn't try. If they were serious about doing this, they would, they would help develop okay, and help fund the development right. of filtering technology. That will work, and it will work against Finland also. The stipulation, of course, was simply dealing with the date uh, of hearing and of the initial TRO. That's wrong, so, Yes, Kathy. it's right. It's right. And but were let's, you let's there, Kathy, on. in the hearing? Let's move on. Were you in the judges' let's chambers? Were you? Oh, no. Mr. Glasser, were you there you when... Keep, you're making this up, right? Mr. Glasser, were no. you there when the First Amendment was carried? <laughs> no, no, but well, I was not, but... How, well, come, you, how come you know exactly what it means? But you were, and, and you've told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Hoffman, uh, on, on this technical point, uh, if, <clears throat> is there no way to prevent other countries from circumventing uh, an attempt to pass pornography on to children? Um, uh, sort of closing down the whole system. You'd have to enter into some agreements with them about how the sites would self-identify, otherwise it would not be. Right? And basically, you would have to ha enter into some sort of international you know, regulations where you say, okay, look, you know, the government of the what U.S. About his tips? His tips would work, wouldn't they? Uh, well, there's, no, there's nothing for an automatic filter because there's nothing that could understand the content just by looking at it. it, it, it you have to it, use it a has to be self-denominated. Yes. 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 I mean, the, the computer does but not I'm, know when, when it, it sees it. it. The, the, the V-chip. <laughs> yeah. I think you may, may be confusing the V-chip, which is for broadcast yeah. media, with, with something that might work on the Internet. And, and in broadcast media, the broadcaster can identify certain kinds of content in a way that will activate the V-chip. Uh, but that. but it has to be self-identified, and there is really no. I mean, that's the problem with the internet. You see, the yes. question there are ways to do this. I mean, here here is the real point. This is different from broadcast. When stuff is on the internet, you need to go get it. And if I am a parent, I can restrict my child to only three sites if I feel like it that are identified by name. How can you do that? I can I can program my computer using software that's freely available on the market. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, and I can say yeah. my Most kid can only go to kids that. online, yeah. or I can say my kid can go to everything except for babes and boobs. Well, of course, yeah. there, are 5, 000, there are 5,000 new but websites each week, and the software companies themselves say that they're imperfect. Wired magazine, they're imperfect. Wired Life magazine, is imperfect, man. No, okay. you know, no friend of the regulation says that it's imperfect and leaky. And the other thing Do is that... you trust the government to be better? It, no, it needs to work in tandem, I of course. I trust the free market, market to give oh, me a oh, service you know, why, that works. Why on this this issue to my conservatives. I, I find it so odd. Why on this issue, after saying that the government is it's so it's untrustworthy about crime. on every it's other area, about in this That's issue why. we say, let's go to the government first and foremost. And so why not trust the market? You know what? It, 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 it is a function of government to, it is a function of government to look after our, our, our physical security. And, yes, it, yes. and it, it is, it is yes. uh, simply another calibration of that to say, yeah. They, ha they have the right to prevent crime. Yes. So if we ordain Including as soccer. crime the, the, the giving thought. of pornography to children, then, then the government has the right to prosecute the criminal. That's also, yes. you Thank know you what, Susan, this is not just about conservatives. Crime, crime, in, in order to protect us physically, and which is what we, we've generally been talking about, mm -hmm. the government has the right to restrict our actions, our physical actions. There are no physical actions on the internet. Yes, there are. There no, the are action, no physical no. actions in cyber. Yeah, John, why do you there think are no it bodies is why, John, there. one second. Why do you think it is legal it is to have a criminal act? A lot of the things that are on the internet that we are talking about are criminal acts. They are mutilations, sexual molestation, and those are the criminal acts. Why is it allowed? Why is it allowed? Why is it allowed to have these things on the internet? If it, if, it, if it is wrong to mutilate it's not just or wrong, torture it's or kill somebody, or if it's criminal, 
then prosecute people for torturing, Doing killing, and, and mutilating. Yeah, we, we, Don't we, prosecute yeah. them for but depicting make, But make the act available for everybody to see. This is a Have you read video. Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment? That you know, describes this is great literature. Act. And I can tell the it, difference between great literature yeah, but well, you, can, and, 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 and you can tell Ariana, and you I can tell, but Michael can tell everybody who has an IQ. Wait a minute, Ariana. It depicts a criminal act. And you just were saying the depiction of a criminal act is a terrible thing that we shouldn't allow. Oh, you, come on. you know what, Michael, if you can't distinguish between Dostoevsky and the kind of stuff on the bulletin boards that we are talking about, then you really but the law need some remedial the class. The government isn't And the government isn't, isn't, and local district attorneys don't, and there are hundreds well, of I, I prosecutions th where they don't. Ms. Glad, I think you know, that's simply... You're living in a dream well, world. Hey, wait a minute. You are. That's simply incorrect. Yes. Uh, the, the courts are invited under Miller to decide with reference to current standards in that community, community. In that whether community. this is that side of the line or that side of the line. Now, you may deploy the decision, so may I, yeah. but under the circumstances, sometimes the government wins, sometimes on the matter of Maplethorpe, the prosecutor lost. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Yeah. Buckley, Bill, what do you do when a client comes to you and says, I have a Maplethorpe and I think it's art and I want to put it on the internet? You say, oh, well, of course, let me advise you that the government has the right under this statute to impanel a group of people in any community anywhere, and they'll apply community standards, and what will those be? Who knows? Take somebody, your risk. That's somebody what we're has not to, supposed so suppose, to do with Suppose speech. I come with a, uh, with a snuff film, and I say, look, this is going to t teach children the value of life, and therefore I want to... But, you, you, say go, you say go away. That's I say and you're not quite right. That's that's quite right. right. Yeah, but, but on, under the circumstance, we're saying you that mean, standards you mean exist. They, they, may be, they may be bad standards. What? You, you, when you say it's snuff film, you, you don't mean a film that shows brutality Pictures and violence. You mean something where, where, where somebody, 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 somebody actually was killed, yeah. so mm -hmm. that there was an actual crime. Right. Cross but in terms of if the, viol if, the, if the violence and the brutality is depicted without anyone really being killed in as brutal a way and as graphic a way, that's okay. That's okay? You mean, you mean like, the, like, and if the, like and everything if the you see in Hollywood every day? know whether it was real or not, that's okay? Why do you want to walk away from the example I gave? Because it's ridiculous. It well, doesn't get I, I, I agree it's ridiculous, and, and, and I'm asking you, therefore, to come forward with the reasoning on the basis of which we say it's ridiculous. If you say it's ridiculous, you, you can see that some people might not say it's ridiculous. Therefore, <laughs> somebody has to decide. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about felony laws. Yeah. The most but important you know, reason Susan, that it's, it's ridiculous... It's not enough to say you're each parent by, should by, be by, 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 by. You're invoking Miller, which is, which is a very precisely design, designed decision well, that talks about community standards, yeah. local community standards. I personally, coming from a small community, am a great believer in community self-determination. The problem is, are you going to set the community standards at, at those of Venice, California, or Smoky Bottom, West Virginia? Well, and, and does the local prosecutor in Smoky Bottom, West Virginia, have the right to say that nobody may put anything on the Internet in Venice, California, which is offensive to the community standards of Smoky Bottom? Yes. And that's even, the real question. Mr. Ball, even if we acknowledge that uh, what doesn't go in Memphis might be okay in Times Square, it is still not impossible to insist on an aggregation of impulses, of, 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 of feelings, concerning certain things, and that's what we're talking about. We're, we're, not, we're not talking about something that would be perfectly cool but also to be shown in Los Angeles. No, no, that's not true. Actually, what the law that just passed would, would restrict is anything that is not presently permissible on broadcast television. No. John, we're also talking about the fact yes. that we, it's not just about our children. It's not just about Susan's children and my children. It's about all our children. And that's what I find amazing. Maybe Susan can do a very good job of protecting her children. Maybe so can I. But here we have hundreds of thousands of children in America who have no fathers, whose mothers are on drugs, you and who do have access, yes, I do have two little girls, and one of the reasons why, one second, Ira, one of the reasons, one of the reasons, Susan, please don't get hysterical, just listen, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this is because in the last two weeks, as I have been reading more and more about what is available on the internet, and looking at my four-year-old and my six-year-old, I have been determined to do anything I can to stop that stuff from being available to my children when they filter. begin to use the then internet. Buy a Buying filter. a filter <coughs> is not enough. If you, if you don't care, Ira, that's your problem. Ms. Dyson, it's, it's the best thing you can do. Wait, wait, wait. Um, it's Miss Dyson's turn to talk. Your, your argument would say, well, let's put all our children into orphanages because oh, the government's actually, going you know, to do a better job of bringing them up. Why do you have to be so absurd? Up? Excuse me. You know, we're talking about something here. 
which involves Democrats and liberals yeah. and, the, and Republicans and conservatives. This is not a political issue. This is a, an issue of mothers and fathers concerned about their children. Right. And bringing I have up many their own liberal, children. I have many liberal friends who are just as concerned as I am about that. In fact, I'm surprised to see you, Susan, on the other side. I am very side. concerned about it, Ariana, and I think the best way in a democracy to express our concerns is by raising our own children appropriately and doing the best we can to help others well, raise Ms. their Esther, children you said in, in our democracy. In our democracy. Okay, you know, are we dem democratically elected, the members of the House and yes. the Senate and the President, 95% yes. of them, yes. including the President, swore to uphold yes. the Constitution, yes. and they voted for this measure. And they voted Which for the Constitution. So do you want to undo bill. democracy? Because, yes, because they just think so. That's, why we, have that's why we have the Constitution. The First Amendment. Look, we could go around today, Mr. Buckley, as you well know, and ask people if they were in favor of the First Amendment, and I dare say a majority might well say no, they weren't. Well, and the reason we have it's a First probably Amendment... probably because of the lengths to which it's been taken by Mr. Gla Glass. No, probably because many people today are so insecure and so afraid that if you offer them any possibility of a solution, as these politicians did, particularly one that costs nothing, then a cheap trick usually works. Right. It doesn't mean it's successful. You'd be surprised at how many letters you're I get asking you're whether not. I could do something about you. <laughs> <laughs> and let's go back. It comes down to a... We, we have 15 we, seconds. The, the problem that we have at hand is the Internet, I believe, is a broadcast medium. The <laughs> problem is that it broadcasts from everywhere to everywhere. Right. I mean, it is a broadcast it's like media. The air. Broadcast that media. fundamentally changes the, the whole notion of broadcast. If every single individual who is online can be a broadcaster, that doesn't that that is a very different notion of broadcast well, than the thank one. Thank you, we, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Next week on Firing Line, host William F. Buckley Jr. and his guests conclude their discussion on regulating cyber smut. This program was a Warren Stiebel production in association with South Carolina ETV. Funding for Firing Line was made possible by a major grant from the John M. Olin Foundation, Incorporated. Additional support was provided by the Annenberg Foundation and the Friends of Firing Line. For information about a video cassette of this program,